Your talent is something that's given to you. Or your gift is something that's conceived in you. Get it right. Your children are conceived in you. That's why I said children are a gift from the Lord. Mama, kala, baba. If it's not children, take children are talent from the Lord. Your children are, are not your talent. You're not supposed to take your children and make them talent and uh, do what you do. I, I do this, so you're supposed to do it. That's what the Lord's trying to do with me. No. Jamie, walk like this. Jamie, talk like this. Your voice is too deep. Lois's voice is deep, but she thought my voice was too deep for me to be 10. Talk like this. Your voice should be higher. Tasha's voice is deep, and Samantha's voice is deep too. Samantha speaks to the minor key. And both of them can sing beautifully. Samantha speaks to the minor key. I do too. I think I speak in like an A sharp or A flat or something whack like that. I don't know. I don't care. And I'm frustrated because I cannot be made your talent. When God gives you your talent, you accomplish what you're supposed to do with your talent. Or you don't. But don't make me your talent. I was in you and out of you. Why? Because I'm a gift, not a talent. He conceived me and conceived me inside of you. Right? I am the gift, not a talent. Right? Look it up. Find the difference. Talents are given. Gifts are conceived. Get it together, folks. Gifts are conceived. And once they are conceived, how do you have them come out of you? They are accessed. The Holy Spirit. He, put, he, he conceives inside of you and he pulls it out of you. Push. Uh! I woke up one morning and my feet were, I woke up one morning and I'm not lying. I was at, on John the Street because those people acted crazy so I'd sleep on my couch. And I woke up and my, both my feet were on top of the, the arm of the couch. Both my feet were up on top of the arm of the couch and my knees were bent. Right? And I woke up in the position of a woman uh, giving birth and God said that's how they do it. Then he mentioned the idea of what? Stirrups. I thought you said, shut up, God. You said, shut up, because I like pancakes. You said, shut up. <laughs> He's like, no. No greedy. Stir ups. <laughs> no greedy. <laughs> you must understand this, because they, they come different by different means. They come by different ways, right? If, if, if something is conceived inside of you, right, it, it comes by different means than if it is given to you. I think the gifts are heart matter, right? It goes straight into your heart and it grows within you. And as you grow in the gift of statistics, of the spirit statistics, you will start to understand better about what she wants to do in you. I'm not talking about fruit. I'm talking about gifts. Gifts he hides in you. And God just said it to me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the um, in, uh, in, in, uh, intonation, whatever that is. He and uh, gifts are conceived inside of you, but out comes fruit. Once you got the gift, out comes fruit. Once you got the gift and you are doing what you're supposed to do with this, uh, right? My pastor, right? Uh, it's, 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 it's working on a form of gentility with me. I just realized it. He is. I don't even know if you know it. Don't email me when I'm on vacation. And don't be emailing me yelling at people and, and cooling people in the email. And the, it's about how cool people a text message. I did that past him. I cool him a text message. I did past Digi. I cool past the Digi. He's so cute. He's so precious. And I talked past Digi yesterday. He is so precious. He's so cute. Right? He's like a little elf. Right? <laughs> but he's not short. But he's like a little elf. But I did that past the Digi and I was giving this D. You know, I, I, Jamie don't listen. If I was just taking it easy, if I was just listening to what he's telling me, that the, the gentility would be conceived inside of me. But there's a working. I think it's Philippians 2 7. Working out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling. That man is coming back at the end of the week. Trust me, I'm trembling. Trust me, I'm trembling. Hey God, uh, work out your soul salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, now I'm saved. Uh, I'm saved. Uh, I'm saved. Uh, I'm saved uh, uh, but then it comes a discipling period. Uh, the salvation is easy. The discipling is valuable. That's a, uh, uh, and the two are not. Uh, 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 like Dan said to me yesterday, he said, Jim, you can't have both. We were talking. I said, I want to know all the people in the church. Because I knew Miss Janice Oliver, but I didn't know her. I didn't get to know her. She had come to me, talked to me a couple times. She loved my poetry, right? But I, but I did not get to know her like I wanted to. And I felt bad. I was like, I wanted to know her better. Uh. I said, I know y'all, and I know all the Rices. I know the, all the, uh, the, the Fredericksons. I know the great-grandmother. The great-grandmother invited me to come down and stay with the, her in Florida on her resort. In her resort or whatever she got, the, the place she got a condo or something. She invited me to come stay with her for a couple weeks. I know her family. <laughs> but I said, I want to know everybody in the church. 
And I want to know them intimately. I want to have a story with each one of them. And then you said, no. Then you just lay it out for you. That's why I like Dan. Dan like me, he don't care. Dan, Dan was like, no. I said, excuse me. <laughs> Be careful though, he's driving. He the one that got the stick shift in the thing. He got the stick and the shift. He got all that. <laughs> he said, no. He said, Jamie, you can have, have both. You have one or the other. He's like, do you want empty relationship? I said, no, I want a great relationship, first of all, with my pastor and his family. But then I want a, a great relationship with those, with those people that I have. He said, then, then build on that. He said, but you're not going to have a great relationship and have a solid relationship with everybody in the church. It's not possible. Hmm. You can't have both. It's almost like because the, the man who had one, he took his talent and buried it. The man who had two, he took his talent and doubled it. The man who had five, he took his talent and doubled it. It's almost like the man that had one talent, though, isn't it? To, uh, you cannot have your talent and bury it. You cannot have uh, your cake and eat it, too. You cannot have both of them. You can't have it. What you mean? I can't. Jimmy don't have camp for nobody. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Did you read Philippians 4, 13? Dan, did you ever read that? Did you read that? Dan? He's right. <laughs> I keep yelling and screaming at him. He's right. They know me. I'm a loud mouth. <laughs> did you read that, Dan? How about to read that, Dan? <laughs> Tell me I can't. What you mean can't? You can't, Dan. Your name sound like can't. Dan. That's your new name, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that just absolutely right we give it a talent and we bury it we take two talents and then we double it and then we take five talents and we double it which person uh, did the right thing if I'm given one talent, right, and I looked at it, I'm telling you, I, I, if I'm given one talent, because God said, stop treating these things that I've given you. Poetry is a gift, right? Uh, painting art, that's a gift. Stop treating them like talents. I said, I'm, uh, then what do I do? Because I look at them, I, God, I'm not talented. I don't have any talent. So I'm very serious about the gift that God has given me, because when people do things to them, or they do things in their direction, it makes me want to kill them. Because they say, ah, this is my baby that you are abusing. This is my baby that you are now taking and beating over the head, beating it over the head with a Jesus mallet. This is my baby. You can do whatever you want to me. I've always said it. You can do whatever you want to me. Touch my painting. Touch my poetry uh, that I've given to God. Um, I've dedicated it back to God. Um, he conceived it inside of me. I've given it back to God. Uh, God said, be careful because if you are too protective over it, your mind will end up in pieces from it. They still, even though, even though, because there was risk involved in all of it. Uh, when the man buried his uh, one, there was risk involved in it. Uh, I'm going to bury it uh, and maybe the dog won't come and dig it up like a bone, right? Uh, uh, maybe the dog won't think it's a bone and dig it up and start chewing on it, uh, right? Uh, uh, you got to be careful, right? Uh, because the, the dogs, uh, right? Uh, the Gentile creatures of that time, that's why I picked the dog of it, the Gentile creatures of that time were dogs. Uh, and the people that were considered dogs were known for being very barbaric and would rip things apart uh, and tear things to shreds. Uh, and so how do I know uh, that, the, that, the, that not the Gentile of today, because we're all Gentiles, basically, most of us, uh, right? But how do I know that the conceptual Gentile will not come uh, and take my talents uh, that I've uh, buried uh, away? I buried it in the ground. Uh, I said I was going to bury my painting. I was going to bury it because uh, I did not want it to be hurt, and it still got hurt. How about the two? I take my two and I know what I do is I, I know what I'm going to do with my two. So I double it. Did the two men with the two do the same thing that the man with the five did? Nobody asked these questions. Who did the best? Right? And out of the man with the two and the man with the five, did they do the same thing? Huh? All we know is that the man with the two and the man with the five, they doubled it. But we also know 
one other thing that makes me uh, want to strive uh, to deal with more. I was given that patent and I have to get to it. Right? It is a thing. Huh? I was given the idea for the patent I had to get to it. The, the, the stores, they said the stores are ready. The stores are ready, Jamie. The stores are ready. They keep texting me. Uh -huh. okay, uh, I, I have to get to it. Uh, I have to get it over. Right? Uh, because here's the thing. Uh, if I take two uh, and I double it, that's one thing. But the man with the five, he doubled it and then he ended up with what? When the king came back to check on the progress, the man with the one lost his because he buried it and did nothing with it. Do you have any gifts? What are you doing with it? Because the man with the two doubled it. He doubled it, he doubled it, and then he ended up with four, and he got to keep it, right? And then the man with the five, he doubled it, and then he got ten, and then he got to keep it. But how many did they end up with? How many counts? Back then, the talent was known to be a couple thousand denarii, right? It's a couple thousand denarii. That's the, 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 the money equivalent of a talent. Now I can believe that because here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you take your talent, right, and you bury it, right, you are negative in the hole with that thing. I count. If I take a painting and I make it today, that painting, right, depending on what I do with it, that painting, let's say it's worth $2,000. That painting's worth $2,000 today. And if I sold it today, right, it'll be $2,000 or $4,000 tomorrow, well, $6,000 the next day. Why would it keep doubling? Because of the fact that that person is now out there showing people that painting, right, and telling people my name or telling people about my name. So you see me people back to me so I can tell them about God's glory and what he's doing for me so I can ask me to make more paintings. What people don't know is well uh, even though my painting was abused right this past uh, Sunday someone saw it and said please I had to take it right and someone saw it and said please 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 I need you to make me one of those so that I can pay you for it. Am I going to take his money? No! Crystal was like, take his money. I was like, no. <laughs> I don't do that. He's in church. I got to pray about it. <laughs> I was like, okay. Because like, Crystal was saying right there. I like, and I just told her about the Etsy shop. I just told her to stop giving stuff away for free. Because she, she was giving me earrings for free. <laughs> so I just told her that. And then, I, and then the man walked up and I said, okay, I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. As soon as I'm done, we'll figure it out. I'm at the Chamber of Commerce. I'm doing some stuff. We'll figure it out. I was trying to get him away from me. <laughs> <laughs> so he wouldn't ask me for a price in front of Kristen. Because she deserves to get paid for what she's doing. Do I? At the end of the day, they turned out with the man that originally had one talent. He ended up with, what, zero, right? Because this got taken away from him. You don't know how to treat it. The, the, the king snatched it away. You don't know how to treat a talent. You don't know what to do with a talent. I gave you a talent, and you're not using a talent. I'm not talking about what you do for your work. Because here's the thing. Here's what Jamie did. Jamie had a talent for taking for photography. I, I'm still a certified photographer. So I had a talent for taking take pictures since I was seven. I want to be a photographer. When I say I want to be something, I want to do something, it's going to get done. So I was seven years old. I said I want to be a photographer. I, 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 I took pictures. And I won awards, and I was in books, and I was in literary magazines, a lot of literary magazines, which is a little weird for me. Then I got a job at Light Touch Portrait Studios, and it ruined it. I said, I never want to see another camera again in life. <laughs> yeah, I do want to touch a camera. I use a camera now on my phone, but just to take pictures of my uh, artwork. I can take a picture. I can take a mean picture. I won awards at the job for taking pictures. I'll sue your manager of the year two years in a row of a worldwide company. I can, that was number one. I can take pictures and, win, and, and make money doing it. And I made up a system where that they're still using. A system that they're still using in the targets to make, for them to make more money. I can take a picture. But I don't want to ever see another camera again. Does that mean that God did not give me that talent? No. 
Do I believe that this is how I'm going to be for the rest of my life? I don't know. But I do, I think that, I, I think this. I think God also takes your talents and uses them where you will make the uh, funds that you need to. The talents of what God gives you. That's why he says, I never see the righteous forsaken, nor see you begging bread. Jehovah's sick canoe who is Jehovah righteousness. God's righteousness uh, gives you talents, uh, right, so that you can use them. If you don't have money and you got talents and God is giving you talents, you have money, you're just not using doing what you're supposed to do with them. In this area, I think gifts and talents are interchangeable. Because I can make money off my talents and I can make money off my gifts. Right? However, the talent is given and the gift is conceived by the Holy Spirit. So could it be that the talent of photography was just handed to me when my grandmother bought me my first camera when I was seven? Because I said I wanted to do it. But God's will was conceived in me for me to be an artist. That's the gift. The gift is artistry. Whether I do it with the patent, the photography, the painting, or the poetry. The gift, right? And God let me know there's, much, there's many more facets inside of that little egg. Hmm. But the point is not how many things God gives you. The point is how you use them, right? He had, he had one. He was given one. He, first he had zero. All of them had zero. They started out at zero. The man with the one was given one. We say the man with the one because he was given one. He was given that one talent. And because he did not use it properly, he buried it. And as a result of him burying it, because you don't know what's happening to it, if you bury it, at least the other two had books. They were keeping books on their stuff. You're not doing anything with it. So as a result of him burying it, he made nothing off of it. He started with zero and ended up with zero, right? Because the talent was taken from him. The man that started with zero, he was given with, he's given two, right? That man ended up with four and he ended up with what? Four. I've, I've outlined this for this way for a reason. The man that was, the third man was, he started out with zero just like the other two. He was handed five, right? He doubled it and made ten. And how many did he end up with? Eleven. It's important. It's important. There's a, there's a reason why God outlines it. I say, God, I mean Jesus Christ, God. And there's a reason why God sits there and outlines it. It is important. Because it's a, are works important? Yes. But are they vital? No, they're not vital to your spirituality, right? Because somebody could get saved on their deathbed. And I believe that when my grandmother really came open and confessed and really, really, really met Jesus was on her deathbed. Somebody could get saved on their deathbed. And I do go to church one time and still meet Jesus in glory. Hallelujah, mama. It says, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? My grandma thought she, was, she wasn't good enough for church. She didn't. So she wouldn't go. She tormented and tor tortured herself her entire life, telling herself over and over and over again, I'm not good enough for church. I'm not good enough to go. But when I came home, she made me, Jamie, sit down and read this Bible to me. I was the one that had to do it. Nobody else could read the Bible to her. She didn't like the way nobody else read it or read it to her. So I had to sit down and read it. And I loved it because I loved it because the word was still being conceived in her heart. The word was still being conceived in her heart. And the gift, give her sense. I can see this is out of you. Not it. It is not about how much I give you because God will give you more. If you use what He gives you. With that poetry, I publish a book. I publish CDs. Right? I did so many things that I could keep going. I wanted to do a trilogy. I actually want to do a trilogy. No, I'm not studying the three. I went to do a trilogy of three books, right? The first book was a, and three CDs. I had the first two CDs. The first CD was Experience of Rhema Word, Expressions. The second CD was Speak of Rhema Word, Expressions. The third one was going to be Live of Rhema Word, Expressions. And I never got to the second book. Is it dead? No. Because God's not dead. God is a gift giver. And he said, stop giving gifts. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. You just gotta, you gotta check it and make sure it's light. It's got light in it. It's got light to it. Hallelujah. Come on, huh? Let's say the race is not given to the swift nor strong, but the him that endureth until the end. You should be able to endure with your gifts. Matter of fact, your gift should egg you on in the race. 
The only thing that stops you from running and stops you in the race are things that are heavy. And so I says, lay aside every weight, not gift, every weight that so easily besets you. Weight easily beset you. That's how you know. That's how you know if a gift is from God or it's a curse from the enemy. Mama Kaba, because a gift could look like the best thing in the world. But God said, pray over it, pray over it, pray over it. The way you know who Mama Kaba is from God is when you pray over it. Hallelujah. Because it says every good, good, good and perfect gift comes from above. And it said that, and they call him the father of the lights, right? I don't quite get that. I think there's a, and I, I, that's, every, that's, every time I hear that scripture, Miss Melanie's quote that a lot. Every time I hear that scripture, it kind of makes me cringe a little bit. Why? Because he would not be the father of lights. He'd be the father of lights. For Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Pastor Gisek and I had a mature conversation on Sunday. A mature conversation. That's why you got to be careful what you, even what you read in the Bible. Because it's been translated, 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 translated. You have to read it. I said, that's why I came up the Bible. I was like, yes, you got to make sure you, gotta, you read it sitting next to the Holy Spirit. Because he will guide you. The Holy Spirit leads you and guides you into all truth. As I'm walking down the street this morning, I know we're just talking. We're just talking this morning. We're not, we're not really heavy with it every day. We're just talking. I'm walking down the streets because I got to go to uh, the Chamber of Commerce every day. I got to be fair of peace. And God said, Jamie, stop being a- upset about it. Stop being angry about it. Put a smile on your face and enjoy it. Because every time I'm going there, I repair a different piece. And it's not me repairing the piece itself. I'm repairing the back of the piece. The clips keep falling off the piece. So I have to go there just to glue the piece back on. And they won't touch it because there's an insurance. There's a high insurance price on every single one of those art pieces. So if anything happens and, they, and they're trying to glue it back on, they're in trouble. So they won't touch it. So they got to call me every single time. I get a call from the chamber every single time something happens. God said, enjoy it. No matter how you feel about it, God is teaching me, number one, because this is my first time hanging in a facility with clay. I, I've got clay pieces all over my walls and nothing is happening with them. But because I have rules that I have to follow over there, I can't hang it any way I want to. I have rules that I have to follow in the way that I have to hang it. The system that they have is not working for my artwork. It's not working for my pieces, so my pieces can fall off the wall. So I have to go and repair each piece every single time. And the only tape I can use is carpenter's tape, which really doesn't stick. To God be the glory. So God said, this morning he said, Jamie, go over there with a smile on your face and enjoy it. I went over there and I ended up talking to another, Maddie was there, but I talked to another receptionist. I was talking to her about God. She said, your art is really beautiful. It's really different. I was like, thank you. <laughs> and opened my way up to talk about God. It opened up. as I'm on the way. But we ought to be open. Our eyes ought to be open for paths. We don't want to walk off paths and follow bunnies down bunny trails and different things like that. No, stay on the way. But, but, but people are lost on paths. So when you see a path open up, right? Cause about, that's what that was this morning. We see a path open up, uh, uh, beckon the person to you. I walked in there and Maddie was like, yeah, we heard that there was a, uh, you had a funeral yesterday. I was like, yeah, I'm so sorry I was here yesterday. And I didn't get the call until after they had left. Because I was literally at church with Ashley until and from like 8 to 15 to 4 o'clock helping her. That's when Dan came to get me. So I didn't know anything was wrong until, until it was too late, until they were closed. And God said, breathe. And they're like, yeah, we're so sorry. We're so sorry. I was like, I'm sorry. I feel bad for missing your call. There's a path. They said, Joe, you were at church. I was like, yeah. It was a nice service, but yeah, it was tough. But God is good. And he's well able. And while I was talking to the other girl in the back, she walked back there. And her shirt was so cute. It was vintage. I love anything vintage looking. It was so cute. I had like ruffles and I had a high neck. I love high neck shirts. I said, if I ever get married, I'm tempted to do a high neck, <laughs> a high neck gown. You know, I just, I think it's beautiful. Anyway, she came in and she was talking and, 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 and I started by telling her, your shirt is absolutely beautiful. I shop on people. We was at ACT yesterday. We're out at ACT with Ashley. This woman came in at ACT with these beautiful pants on. They were palazzo pants. I was like, oh my Lord, I love your pants. She was like, thank you. Walmart. <laughs> I was like, Ashley, did you see your pants? She was like, no. 
I was like, you didn't hear I scream Walmart at me? <laughs> I should got pay attention sometimes. Supposed to help me shop. So anyway, <laughs> so shopping on the lady up there, shopping on this woman, you know. And we got to talk a little bit, and before she walked out the room, she clean, came to clean a little bit. And she talked to me, and before she walked out the room, she said, thank you so much, because she's like, your art, is really, your art is really beautiful. I was like, thank you for that, right? You know, thank you. I said, but you just, you helped me too. She said, how? I said, you help me figure out what I'm going to talk about next week. By me being there, I got to witness to somebody, and, right, because I've been saying, I told you guys, I did not know I was going to get up and say in front of those people, now I know. And God gave me one word, bouquet. Hey, God, glory. Bouquet. If you have a little art show, why not talk about what, what, what the art that you're doing, Jamie? <laughs> why not talk about the artifacts? The artifacts. Talk about that. Talk about it. Ignis just said, take me with you. Mama Ignis said, take me everywhere with you. I want to go. I ain't going to know without Ignis. Ashley, come and get me. Okay, Jamie, I'm going to Harmony, come and get me. Okay, Jamie, I'm on my way. 915. She come and get me. 915, everything's done. Okay, Harmony, you better have a clear back seat because Ignis is coming with me. Come on, I'm like, Ignis is coming with me to church in the morning. You want to pick me up? Okay, Ictus is coming too. What? Ictus is coming. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere without Ictus. I get in the shower. You behind me, Ictus? Okay, that's kind of weird. You can wait outside the shower. <laughs> Ictus! I watch the TV, I watch TV. <laughs> that was funny, right, Ictus? That was funny. <laughs> what you want for dinner, Ictus? <laughs> Y'all think I'm playing. As Harmony, I set a place at, on my dining room table that was on Johnson Street. Big dining room table, I set a place for Jesus. I did, why not? Who won't stop me? It's my dining room table. I wanted Jesus in my house. It's rude to have people come over and not have food. It is a rude. It's a so strange to set a place for Jesus, but I did. Harmony, Pastor Tim and all of them knew, they all knew. I'm serious about Jesus. I, I, listen, I don't have Jesus. But every time I walk past this table, the serious part about it is, every time I came down the stairs, I ran right into my dining room table. I, you come downstairs into the dining room. So every time I look at my dining room table, I sit down to eat, I want to think about Jesus. I don't want to think about Jamie. I don't want to think about anybody else. Sir. If I sit down at my dining room table, the placemat was right across from me. So I want to think about Jesus. I want to think about Jesus. What would it be like if Jesus was sitting here? Huh? What would it be like if Ictus was here? Huh? What would I do if Ictus was here? Huh? How would I, would I talk about Would I talk like that for the Ictus? Would I have this phone conversation if Ictus was on the phone with me? Huh? Would I watch this TV show? This is a big one. Huh? I think this was here, right? And this makes it hard for me because I, there are many, 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 many shows that I can't watch anymore. Because they're not, they're not sin catchers or sin causers. They're sin catchers or sin causers. What they are are weights. 